Are you an ounce of prevention or a pound of cure kind of person? Now we're all familiar with Benjamin Franklin's famous quote, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, which just so happens to be wonderfully applicable advice for just about every area of our lives. But perhaps nowhere is it more applicable than when it comes to our health. Modern medicine has undoubtedly achieved miraculous results in countless ways. But here's the irony. Modern medicine is also becoming a major threat to public health. In fact, according to Dr. Peter Goch, co-founder of the reputed Cochrane Collaboration, the three most common causes of death on a global scale are in this order. Heart disease, number one. Cancer, number two. And believe it or not, prescribed medications is the third most common cause of death. And here's the thing. If you're like most Americans, you start your day with a cup of coffee and a handful of pills. Did you know that more than half of all Americans regularly take a prescription medication? And in fact, four on average. At, well, at least according to a 2016 Consumer Reports national survey of nearly 2,000 adults. And many people in that group, in addition, take over-the-counter drugs and dietary supplements simply because we've been led to believe that health can be achieved through prescriptions and supplements. So the big question is, where did people get this idea? Here's a big surprise. They got the idea from the drug companies themselves. And get this, in 2016, total spending on drug ads targeting American consumers reached $6.4 billion. That is a 64% increase over 2012. <laughs> but it gets worse. In 2012 alone, drug companies spent four times that amount 24 billion dollars in direct marketing to American doctors. A couple of years ago, I came across an article in Consumer Reports about a 55-year-old man named Jeff who served as a classic example of the fruits of all those advertising dollars. In 2009, Jeff, a man in his early 40s, was running a successful deli as well as a snowplow business during the winter months. Now, around that time, Jeff noted that he was beginning to feel a little more tired than usual. So what did he do? <laughs> well, he went to his doctor who prescribed androgel, a drug containing the male hormone testosterone. Now Jeff says he didn't know at that time that testosterone drugs were only approved by the FDA for men with hypogonadism, or men with very low levels of testosterone. He also says he wasn't warned that Testosterone increases the risk of heart attack or stroke, according to the FDA. Well, four days after Jeff began taking androgel, he suffered a stroke. And it probably comes as no surprise, but Jeff is now part of a class action lawsuit of more than 6,000 other people who are suing six testosterone manufacturing companies for claims that they suffered a heart attack, stroke, or other cardiovascular event after using one of their drugs. But that all too common story is the inevitable result of the pound of cure culture we live in. Far too many people and their physicians have come to think that every symptom, every hint of a disease requires a drug. More than ever before, we need to acknowledge that we cannot medicate our way to health. See, when it comes to our health, we need to become problem avoiders rather than problem solvers. If you look at the world of pharmaceuticals and medicine, much of it is devoted to correcting poor health choices. It's no longer uncommon for us to blindly accept our deteriorating health as a natural result of aging, when in fact, it's really nothing more than the inevitable result of failing to proactively take charge of our health. Many of us seem to have no problem focusing on our careers, our homes, or 
maybe purchasing a new car. But we so often overlook the one thing that truly matters, our health. However, if you practice living a healthy, ounce of prevention lifestyle, you will absolutely reap untold benefits in every way imaginable. For example, you will almost immediately enjoy increased energy and vitality. Your confidence will soar and you'll actually make better decisions in every area of your life. In fact, the more you practice an ounce of prevention healthy lifestyle, the less stress and anxiety you'll experience and your quality of life will simply not deteriorate as you age. So what's required to be an ounce of prevention kind of person? All you have to do is be sure that you invest in your most valuable asset every single day. For example, did you make some kind of investment in your health today? What about yesterday and the day before that? If you honestly answered yes, then good on you. You are an ounce of prevention kind of person when it comes to your health. However, if you couldn't say yes, I urge you to give your priorities a very serious rethink. Each of us needs to develop an ounce of prevention mindset to our health. And that simply means being proactive and responsible for our health and well-being. Instead of turning to medications to cure a problem we could have easily avoided in the first place. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.